Uh, all right. Well, I want to move with the the time we got left um, to talk about um, the state of the industry right now, because uh, you know obviously we're just came off two years of the best sales numbers in history. Um, some incredible um, financial reports from the two uh, publicly traded companies, Ruger and Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wesson had the first billion dollar revenue year of any gun company in history. Now we're seeing that those numbers slow down, right? Come back to earth. Um, Smith and Wesson post a 69% um, drop off in sales uh, in their for first quarter of this year, which is, uh, you know, their first quarter is, it's a financial quarter. So it ended in July. It's not calendar, but, but either way, uh, you know, your, your Ruger had their sales decline in a similar fashion, uh, not quite as steep, but uh, you know, these companies, uh, are seeing uh, slowdowns. You're also seeing this in the next checks numbers, which you guys do an analysis of every month, where we're now back towards the third best month right. each month. Right. Um, and you're seeing this summer season actually be the slow season again, because normally it is in most years, but the, you know, the pandemic, the rioting, all this stuff that happened, politics, the election yeah. drove so much uh, activity. What what is your uh, you know forecast now? What is your outlook on where the industry is is at? Yeah. So obviously, as you mentioned, twenty and twenty one were you know off the charts, highest sales ever in the history of the industry. Uh, and so, at some point, that that was not sustainable forever. So we're seeing a return to uh, you know more normal, quote unquote, um, you know from the peak. But so 22 will be the third best year in the history of the industry. That's very clear from the next data, as you mentioned, every month has been like the third best month ever, you know, behind 20 and 21. So it's going to be the third best year, which is not a bad thing, right? So it's still a phenomenal year for the industry, just not the same as 20 and 21. But again, you know, that was not sustainable forever. And you know we've seen these uh, spikes in demand in the past, and they usually come either with a presidential election or as a result of some political event or tragedy that leads to uh, you know heated discussion about gun control and, and banning products. But mm -hmm. what we see, if you look at the next data over many years, you see the spike. And then you see when it comes off of the spike, the, the valley floor is higher uh, before the, the surge. And we're seeing that here, right? We're settling at the third best year, but it's still way ahead of where we were in 18, 19, et cetera. You know, people refer to the Trump slump, right? Right. Uh, you know, and so, uh, but, it, you know, the Trump slump was still well ahead of, you know, where things were in a couple of years before that. So so that's a phenomenon we see over time. That will repeat itself, I believe. Um, you know, sales are moderating. Uh, ammunition sales, you're starting to see a product on the shelf a little more regularly. Uh, but demand is still very high overall. We have a lot of new gun buyers in the last two years. Uh, and many of them are engaging in the shooting sports and hunting. And so they're consuming ammunition. and it's like many uh, kind of sports, you know, you, you you buy golf clubs and then you say, well, I need a better driver. I need a different wedge or a putter. So then you go buy other products, um, you know, skiing the same thing. Well, I need a uh, ski for powder snow. I need ro ice skis, rock skis, and I need different skis for skiing moguls than, you know, groomed trails, that sort of thing. So we'll, we'll see that, it, you know, it will moderate now. You know, we'll see what happens in the midterms. I think if both chambers flip and then obviously the Democrats cannot advance gun control in Congress and put it on uh, President Obama or uh, Biden's desk. Uh, so I think that will cause more moderation. There, you know, as you know, when there's threats to uh, bans, people react and try to purchase uh, what they perceive will be banned before it, that happens. So yeah. I, I think, you know, both chambers flip, and it's, I think it's very clear the House will flip. It's a question how uh, much of a majority 
Republicans will have. The Senate is is more of a toss up, but um, but if it flips, you know, by it, by one seat, right, it's then changes control and, and the and they, you know whoever's in the majority sets the agenda. So it will moderate, and then I think as you approach 24, depending on the politics, depending on the rhetoric leading into the 24 presidential election, sales are likely to pick up again leading into that election. That's just sort of the cycle we see. But but no question, we're off of the peaks, but the value floor is higher. Right. Uh, speaking of uh, these sales spikes in response to uh, you know legislation effectively moving forward, uh, obviously we had the assault weapons ban pass the House for the first time in 30 years uh, since the last one expired. Um, <clears throat> but it doesn't seem like we've, uh, experienced a uh, you know a big rush in uh, purchases of the affected guns, AR-15s, AK-47s, uh, yeah, they're what you guys call modern sporting rifles. Um, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of retailers in the Northern Virginia area here, and just you know, I go to gun stores on a regular basis and don't don't notice any empty shelves in terms of uh, you know AR-15s. Um, and I've talked to Brandon Wexler of Wex Gun Works down in Florida who's, uh, you know, experienced the same thing where it hasn't really been a, a big jump in sales. Obviously, that's not, you know, I'm still trying to talk to some more retailers throughout the country just to get a better idea. But, uh, you know, have you have you noticed any uh, increased demand for ARs in the wake of that assault has been? And uh, if not, why, why not? We have not, uh, we, you know, we haven't heard reports from manufacturers or retailers telling us, wow, there's a, a, a surge has occurred. And I think the reason for that is because it's very clear the bill that just barely passed the House um, is not going anywhere in the Senate. Uh, it doesn't have anywhere near 60 votes it would need to move. Uh, there are many Democrats that would not vote for, for this bill. Uh, a ban on modern sporting rifles. I think, uh, I don't even believe it would get 50 votes, let alone anywhere approaching 60. So I think right. there's not a political fear, despite the rhetoric coming from, you know, Schumer, Biden, Pelosi, the votes are not there. Uh, I sure. don't even think it has uh, anywhere near 50 votes. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably true. Uh, but I guess, uh, do, you, do you think gun buyers have become a bit more savvy on, you know, which legislation is likely to pass and which um, is not? Because obviously yeah, in the past, they, uh, we've seen spikes around legislation that ultimately didn't yeah. didn't go anywhere. Uh, I think um, maybe that's true. I'm not really sure. Uh, we, you know, we really haven't done any kind of polling to sort of get a, a view on that. But I, I think, uh, you know, we've certainly tried to explain to people the votes aren't there in the Senate. Um, many political stories about it have also made that point that it's very unlikely to move anywhere in the Senate. Um, so, uh, and interestingly, in the House, uh, more Democrats voted against it than Republicans voted for it. Only two Republicans voted for it. Those are the two votes necessary to get it over to, to pass it. But um, mm -hmm. there were, I believe, seven uh, Democrats who voted no. Uh, which was interesting. So, um, so I don't think it's moving. M maybe uh, the buyers is sort of realizing that uh, from you know, press. Uh, uh, you know, hard to say for sure. The other factor I would say is the Bruin decision. I think has probably had an impact that mm. now for the first time people say, okay, there's clearly no history to banning rifles of any kind. Uh, and so, and I believe under the you know, the Supreme Court's articulation of a proper test in Bruin, uh, I think we're going to see bans that are in place now at the state level fall and be struck down. Um, the same for magazine capacity restrictions. So that decision, you know, really is a game changer for uh, the future of gun control legislation. It's going to be That's much more difficult for the, the gun control uh, organizations and advocates to uh, you know, have bans on hardware and things like that. 